Hi. Previously, we looked at the uh, epistemology of Job's friends. Epistemology meaning how we know. What is Job's epistemology? How does he know what he knows? In the book of Job, we find that Job says things very similar to his friends. Frequently, there's an overlap. He claims to have knowledge from personal experience, from second and third hand experience, from friends, family, society, from tradition, from the, his four parents, as well as his own reasoning and his observations of nature. But he becomes aware of the problems attached to what he has always thought because of his own current situation. He's been now on the other side, so he sees things a little differently. Job has very high standards for himself. His bottom line is fear God and shun evil. You find that statement when he's speaking in Job 28.28. 28. He describes how he lives in chapter 29 and his code of living really reminds one of the, ser the Sermon on the Mount as to its height of uh, requirements. Uh, I'm going to read to you Job 31. This is his code. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then I, sh why then I should look upon a young woman? That's a question. Why then should I look upon a young woman? For what is the allotment of God from above, and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is it not destruction for the wicked, and disaster for the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with falsehood, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed on honest scales, that God may know my integrity. If my steps, if my step has turned from the way, or my heart has walked after my eyes, or if any spot adheres to my hands, then let me sow and another eat. Yes, let my harvest be rooted out. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind for another, and let others bow down over her. For that would be wickedness. Yes, it would be iniquity deserving of judgment. For that would be a fire that consumes to destruction, and would root out all my increase. If I have despise the cause of my male or female servant when they have complained against me. What then shall I do when God rises up? When he punishes, how shall I answer him? Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one fashion us in the womb? If I have kept the poor from their desire, or caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or eaten my morsel by myself, so that the fatherless could not eat of it. But from my youth I reared, I reared him as a father, and from my mother's womb I guided the widow. If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, or any poor man without covering, if his heart has not blessed me, and if he has not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the fatherless when I saw I had help in the gate, then let my arm fall from my shoulder, let my arm be torn from the socket. For destruction from God is a terror to me, and because of his magnificence I cannot endure. If I have made gold my hope, or said to find gold, you are my confidence, 
If I have rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hand has gained much, if I had observed the sun when it shines or the moon moving in brightness so that my heart had been secretly enticed and my mouth has kissed my hand, this also would be an iniquity deserving of judgment. For I would have denied God who is above. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, or lifted myself up when evil found him, indeed I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for a curse on his soul. If the men of my tent have not said, Who is there that has not been satisfied with his meat? But no sojourner had to lodge in the street for I have opened my doors to the traveler. If I have covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, because I feared the great multitude and dreaded the contempt of families so that I kept silent and did not go out of the door. Oh, that I had one to hear me. Here is my mark. Oh, that the Almighty would answer me, that my prosecutor had written a book. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder and bind it on me like a crown. I would declare to him the number of my steps, like a prince would approach him. If my land cries out against me, and if furrows weep together, if I have eaten its fruit without money, or caused its owners to lose their lives. Then let thistles grow instead of wheat, and weeds instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. So his code was was very high to, to live by. But we're not told where he got his code from. But if one fears God and shuns evil, which seems to have been Job's bottom line, do we need a list that covers all the possibilities? Do we need someone else to tell us what is right or wrong in a given situation? Do we need to ask JW Org about things that should really be dictated by our own conscience? Things like job ethics, marital intimacies, etc. These things, if we just left it with fear God and shun evil, would have been taken care of. I'm going to link to a video that I did based on readings from a book by Jerry Bridges called Practice of Godliness. It was entitled, Former Member of JW's Learns to Fear God me being the former JW.